Hey guys, Ron here, and once again I brought together three other artists, gave them a prompt, and we all had to create some Pokemon that embody the description I gave them, which was Boss and Underlings. Their job was to create a family of two Pokemon where the evolved form is a boss or leader of the pre-evolved form, like Murkrow and Honchkrow, or even Dreepy and Dragapult. Now we're finally going to reveal our Fakemon to you guys and each other. Let me introduce these amazing artists. June from Jinja Ninja is back at it again, and after a few episodes away, Moxie2D has graced us with his presence. And our third and brand new guest is Mr. Bonnie John, a super skilled character designer and illustrator. Check the description for the links to these wonderful artists. Now let's finally see the results. But before that, consider leaving a like if you enjoy so I know to make part 6, and check out my Pokemon art playlist which has tons of videos like this one where I create new Pokemon. I think we'll start now. Bonnie, are you ready to go first? Absolutely, I am ready to go first. Not nervous at all. <laughs> no, not at all. Are you kidding me? I'm not shaking. What? I'm nervous. I'm shaking. Yeah, so I do have like a pseudo presentation. You know, I suppose that would. Damn. Uh... Did everything freeze for you guys, or is that just me? Yeah. I thought my internet died. <laughs> Bonnie's presentation is huge. <laughs> Do you think he's just giving his presentation right now? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> your presentation turned off your microphone. <laughs> it's too powerful. Hey, can you hear me now? You're back. Yeah, you're there back. you are. So, Ooh. bugs. What are bugs? Little guys. Little oh guys, God, the best guys. Unique, cute, adorable. The best of all animals in the world. And in fact, everybody knows the story, right? Satoshi Tajiri. He was out there being a little kid, you know, collecting bugs like Pokemon. I kind of wanted to make a Pokemon that kind of like recreated that feel, so to speak, of bug collecting, right? And they, they could exist mm. in their own niche of Pokemon. So, bam! And live look at your boy, beetles, armor, horns. You can't beat them. I was like, I've got to do something with these little guys right here. Please don't so, tell me you made nine forms. <laughs> oh, I wish. I mean, I'm a tryhard for sure, but um, no, 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 not yet. <laughs> so, bugs and sumo, right? That very action of sports and, and competition. <laughs> um, we know that out there, there is a hobby and, and competition of raising beetles, right? And, and having them compete. Hang so, on. What do you mean we know that? <laughs> I've never heard of that before. What? Wait, you're serious, dude? I mean, it's not like I'm a bug freak or anything. Or yeah, whatever. no, not at all, clearly. <laughs> no, so, okay, so allow me to explain to you in the audience. And also, hello, audience. Um, so, you know, in Thailand and Japan, uh, this is a thing where people will go out and catch beetles right and raise them and people will actually you know train them by like you know pushing their fingers against their little heads and and mm. strengthen them and it's oh. like pokemon in real life yeah and so when you see you know the idea of these beetles flipping and, and pushing each other over um you know it's it screams sumo the cool thing about the through lines that are established by combining these two worlds is down to the name Oh, so, I love when that happens. So, Kabutomushi is the Japanese, well, name or word for the beetle, right? Or the rhinoceros beetle in particular. Mm. Um, translates to helmet bug. So, so, Kabuto, the Pokemon's name is just helmet? Yeah. It's helmet. <laughs> Did I just yeah. learn that? <laughs> hey, everyone. Bonnie here. The through lines we'll need to establish in this first stage will be the head and helmet. Everything else should fall into place. Starting as a ground bug, this little man's going to have to earn the fighting type. His horn is going to resemble a diamond shovel, and we'll style the carapace armor of the beetle into that of a helmet to resemble a chonmage, a traditional Japanese top knot haircut worn by samurai and now by sumo wrestlers. That style was designed as such so that a samurai kabuto could sit steadily atop the head in battle. Keep that in mind when we push into the next form. Okay, so here we go. Here's the first form. I hope you guys like this little guy. <laughs> oh. Here we go. Those eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's our boy. That's Rukishi. I love the, the stalwart Pokemon. So, Rikishi <laughs> is the name for, um, it's a generalized term for wrestlers in the unsalaried divisions of the profession. So, getting Rookie in there and uh. mixing it, it just, mm -hmm, it registers very well and then sets up that dynamic that is our prompt, right? What does the Rookie look like and then how does this become 
the general leader of the community. Rikishi is made of two kanji characters that translates into gentleman slash samurai, which Thanks. is just, yeah, it's so perfect. Uh, if I may, I'll read out the dex entry. Yeah, yep. please. Let it kind of cook a little bit. So, Rukishi live in communities called Heya spearheaded by a singular leader. The Rukishi work together in tandem to develop a thriving Heya and enjoy competitive battles against one another at the end of the day. They're particularly good at mining minerals and other deposits, and in specific on the lookout for the perfect grain of salt, a necessary component for their evolution and a chance to become the next leader of the group. Rukishi make for excellent starter Pokemon. So. Hmm. This is so yes, intricate. What I wanted to do with this Pokemon was have it be, again, that collecting kind of element. True, I would true. like to think if we played, you know, a game with Rukishi in it, you would look for at the top of his diamond shovel. We have a salt piece there. So you would collect that salt piece and then kind of use that as entry into a competition. <laughs> and only in that competition would our boy get to evolve. Ah, sick. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. That's mm -hmm. awesome. I actually really like how well integrated the hair is into the design. I love when like hu yes. human elements actually sure. naturally meld with the animal parts. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's on his all fours or all eights or sixes or sixes. however many mm -hmm. legs bugs have. I'm gonna exactly. get <laughs> I'm gonna get melted for that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I like is you can sort of see his like samurai armor. Like I, I'm seeing samurai armor, there like you the shoulder go. pads and and the chest piece. Mm -hmm. But he's he's line. kind of on top of it, right? So you mm -hmm. there's like that kind of mystery just like sitting there in the design Love i think that. that's really cool the heart one of the hardest part with pokemon is unique eyes and i like this like triangular True. eye shape it's just like oh, i don't you. think i've seen that mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. yeah he's even spread apart like a samurai yes legs. but yeah bugs have the best eyes in pokemon if you go they through do. them they do so it's like very fun to come up with unique bug eyes debatable but okay. Well, which type you think has, has the best uh, I don't eyes. know, but there's no way it's bug type. There's no bugs, way. Bugs, bugs are the best Pokemon. Hey, think uh, about boys. it. See, in real life, bugs have the weirdest eyes. They, they may have the weirdest eyes. They may have the most unique eyes. Uh, That's possibly true. Okay. All right. I'll take unique. I'll take weird. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe ghost. Maybe ghost has better eyes. Ghosts have cool ones too. Yeah. I'd need to research before I could have a horse. Yeah, I know. I, I shouldn't <laughs> have said anything. <laughs> Yokozuna is the title given to the most decorated of sumo wrestlers, and translates to horizontal rope. This must be incorporated into our design to hammer home that this evolved form is the head honcho amongst Rukishis. Other through lines we'll need to evolve will of course be the Chunmage helmet transitioning into a full-on Kabuto. We'll incorporate whisker-like antenna to mimic a crest, and even add a mustache or flare. The carapace continues and now appears plated like samurai armor. And to top things off, we'll evolve the shovel horn into a powerful spade. All right. Ready. Here's our big oh, boy. Oh, that's a really big good design. Boy. Round. Thank you. Thank you. Roundy boy. Yeah. <laughs> Little guy becomes the big guy. So this is Yokobuna. And so then we have uh, Kabuto kind of interspliced right into the middle there for Yokobuna. I would like to imagine there'd be a separate little league for Rukishi to compete in, just like, you know, people do in real life. So it would be like a Pokemon battle in a Pokemon ba game, like a smaller version of it. Mm. Um, maybe the mechanics would be different. You know, maybe like you're pu pushing different buttons and your your Rukishi is kind of like, you know, pushing through, like, you know, trying to shovel his opponent, flip him up in the air yeah. by pushing this button, you know, sprint or defend. Yokozuna not only is a title, but it is a term that means horizontal rope. I was like, I want a natural way to get that white rope. And yes. so salt is such an important part of the ceremony process that I figured, hey, we have a ground type. They're digging, right? This is like there I wanted to make a Pokemon like Wukishi who wasn't overtly training to be a champion. They are building a community, you know, digging in the ground, um, building these heyas, these communities, and in those repeated action, like digging they're flipping and learning how to fight oh. you know? and it's kind of like learning these fighting moves through actions that help a community it's kind of like so, karate kid if you think about it yeah i wanted to, i didn't want to make a pokemon a fighting pokemon that was like i want to be the best fighter it's more like i want to be um an active member of my community and become this great warrior and teacher and so Yokobuna, when the last remaining Rukishi in this little mini tournament wins, all the salt that's 
on the field become a belt and that's what will evolve with the Pokemon into Yokobuna and where that's is it awesome. um, you perfectly combined like all four elements thank honestly. you truly thank you the shape language on this is immaculate I gotta thank say thank you thank like, you all the shapes Wide here are boy. clear and like they have a purpose so if you look at the size chart they're actually kind of small you I know, they're about kind of, I, yeah, <laughs> I they're bug, but I, I also wanted to again keep that like almost like pocket Pokemon, you know, league in yeah. a Pokemon game. I'm almost getting like Uncle Iroh vibes, or like yeah. almost like, <laughs> like he kind of. I love that. He, he could kick your ass, but also he cares, you know. Well, right, exactly. <laughs> it makes sense because in order to evolve into this guy, you have to be like a strong and like virtuous person you know in your community you have to actually exactly. help your community so i like yep. that idea like this guy isn't he doesn't abuse his power i assume he's a nice no, guy no no never that yeah, yeah yeah i would like to think that um you know he seeks out any type of pokemon that would want to you know do battle other yokobuna other fighting types anybody would give him a shot it didn't start out as a fighting pokemon that wanted to be the best they wanted to build their community and in those physical actions and otherwise kind of build their resolve very much in that kind of sumo and samurai kind of way you know yeah um where you know the discipline like the the prestige of it comes in the journey true i don't know why i said true as if i relate to the samurai <laughs> <laughs> hey maybe you yeah, do yeah, I, I understand don't know. i, know I don't know your is. life no i'm very proud of the final evolution <laughs> as if i i made it <laughs> 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 proud as in like i chose i chose bonnie to be here that means thank you yeah, no yeah. dude seriously nah, thank you. Nah, it's <laughs> it's surreal recording with you guys like i can't get over it thank you cool my turn <laughs> let's go let's okay. go the ringmaster ron moment the dynamic that i chose was that of a rock star and their fans hello Ooh basically took inspiration from like hair metal <laughs> i was braced to see a pokemon so that caught me a little off guard <laughs> <laughs> so basically the pre-evolution is like it's gonna be the groupies that are obsessed with the musician evolve that's cool um so yeah it's basically based on glam rock but also like the evolution is both like rock star and like orchestra mm -hmm. oh Okay. Um, like an orchestra conductor specifically that hypnotizes its audience and drains their energy. So, <laughs> I mean, like a rock orchestra wow. is a thing, right? Yeah, I, I, that's my, my one of my favorite genres, like rock orchestra. Like, think of like My Hero Academia, like uh, You Say Run, Ooh, like all these like run. anime soundtracks. Best. So I'll take a bit of inspiration uh, from Vampire Bats, uh, just so there is an Ooh. animal basis, but and it also makes sense since like those are associated with draining. Uh, their targets, I guess, and also use sound waves, just like musicians. So, hey. those are those those are the inspirations. So originally, I wanted this prevo to have a ponytail in the shape of a music note, but it looks too strange. In the end, I made its hair look more like lightning, and its eyes look like they're starstruck. I originally made its ears flop down, so it didn't look too much like a bat. But later on, I see that as a mistake. Its skirt-like fur is as spiky as its hair, and at the end of the day, this was very much inspired by 80s fashion. It has a long finger that looks like a glow stick that it uses to cheer on its evolved form. Now I'm just correcting the proportions before giving it color that matches its psychic and electric typing, but then I decided to finally overhaul the ears and made them a bit more bat-like. So the pre-evolution is Devolti. Oh, that Holy is so oh. cute! That is so cute. The devoted Pokemon. Oh, the name is so fun. Oh, it works so <laughs> well. So, in Electric Psychic, groups of Devolti, of Devolti spend their time like idolizing their evolved form, and they can retract their glowing uh, wand-like finger, which they use to dazzle other Pokemon. Basically, like a glow stick in a concert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and during the day, they go around gathering other Pokemon for the night performances of their evolved form. <laughs> and Devolti will mimic the moves of their evolved form in order to impress them and they're completely fanatical and will attack those that threaten their evolved form and they can produce sound and light waves from their fingers and will shock or hypnotize their opponents and it also has a signature uh, ability called Orchestrate which boosts the power of sound based moves like uh, Toxtricity's uh, Punk Rock Nice I love that the sparkle in the eye it's the perfect like anime idolization exactly. you just get it straight away it's like yep I got the sparkle in my eye <laughs> it, it registers like as an electric type eye 
just like kind of like mm, that spark. That's and, true too. I kind of yeah, like Luxray's tail. I yes. think has a similar kind of shape. True. Um, the color palette is just so delicious. It, it's so, <laughs> that's how I used to describe it. Yeah, it's so appealing. Like it, you can get the typings right away. Mm. I can't remember the names of the Pokemon, but it feels like every generation there's like the signature kind of psychic type. I'm not really talking about Abra, I'm talking oh, more about the later talking. gens. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember the names of them. Oh, oh, so, uh, and it okay. just has that kind of vibe to it. Meowstic, but it's way like cooler because it's electric type. Yeah, like Meowstic and stuff. Um, right. Like Gardevoir, right. Gothitelle. Even like Gothitelle and stuff. Yeah, it feels right. like it's that signature kind of Pokemon, but uh -huh. in a theme that I like more. <laughs> I like to call them like the astral Pokemon or whatever. Oh, right, yeah, okay, that's cool. Sure. Is there any theme behind the shiny? Uh, mm. RGB. Ah, okay. Forgot about that. Oh, Fun. Cool, 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 it's, it's, a light, cool. a light, it's both a light and sound Pokemon, I guess. Sorry, Ron, please give me one moment. I mean, you'll notice it way more in the evolution. We'll talk about it in the evolution. The evolution is this, but way more. <laughs> Now I'm giving this Pokemon rather humanoid proportions. It's slender and triangular to make it look a little sinister and flamboyant. Its hair is a mixture of glam rocker, 18th century composer, and vampire. It even has chest hair that looks like a, an ascot. The padded shoulders of the 80s too. Its glow stick finger is now the baton of a conductor. It has an obscured bat nose too. This is... Be Conduct. Oh, Yo! That is... Wow, there's so much to take in. I love spiky Pokemon, which also adds to the silhouette, and that is a spiky ass Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Spiky Pokemon are easier to draw for the audience. This, yeah, electric. that's definitely true. This is definitely an electric type. Definitely. So, mm -hmm. this is the conducting Pokemon. They use their baton finger to create waves that hypnotize their audience. They will strum the air at different intervals to create various frequencies that produce various sound waves, each with various purposes and commands. It is very egotistical and will not perform without an audience. It feeds off yep, the applause of the audience. No one knows if Defaulty actually worship Bee Conduct out of their own free will, It's, but in reality it's this whole like chicken or egg cycle while mm -hmm. where like Defaulty cheers, which, conduct, which gives Bee Conduct power to make its audience cheer more. <laughs> which makes them cheer mm -hmm. and then give him power. Um, so ultimately, B Conduct is still passionate about music and does not accept false praise. So when it doesn't believe that its fans are genuine, it lets out this loud cacophony of electromagnetic waves that just knocks out <laughs> the target. And it has an, a signature move called Ovation Drain. Uh, the user consumes the applause of its audience, restoring its HP. So it, it works. It's like a. Oh. But it only. Oh, that's the draining. It only works when the target is confused. So it's like a confusion dream eater. Whoa. Wow. I love when we get new like moves and, and abilities yeah. and stuff in these. That's, that's my, like almost my favorite part of doing this. I don't know, True. even though I'm an artist. <laughs> Definitely the easiest part. I'm back. I'm so sorry about that. My, my dogs were picked up by the dog groomer right before we started here. And mm, they were supposed to take an hour. They got done a little early. Got it. <sighs> my bad. Oh, this guy's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just edit that in a little earlier. <laughs> um. I like his vampire bat ears. I like his conductor chest piece. <laughs> Very fun, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he is self-explanatory. Not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fun. No, I do. I you. You explain the personality and you can actually fully... You don't even need to explain the personality, exactly. like you said. You can tell he's a bit hes a bit full of himself. He wants things to go his way. He's got fun hair, you know, got, big yeah. one. Fun. Fun. Fun, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do enjoy how the limbs, you know, like, they're, it's all really readable. You extended them. Like, I can see this guy, like, prancing around the stage, waving his arms around. It would, you know, really register well, like... Like looking at the legs there, like I'm just watching this guy like kind of freely move and pirouette and like just be so extra. You yeah, know? yeah. He's a he's a psychic electro type, so yeah, he can move, he can float, he can do mm -hmm. anything. Oh, oh yeah, right. also yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna add a lot of cool stuff there. Like originally, like I'm like these are technically based on bats a little bit, so like, we, but they don't need wings since they're psychic type. So I'm mm. like, that's eh, all good. Wings would be stupid on this thing, but that would sell it as a bat. For me. Yeah, the no, bat I mean. was an afterthought because like I just need some kind of animal to make it, you know, not just yeah. a human. Because really, yeah, yeah. it really was just like a human, like a humanoid Gothitel Gar mm -hmm. like Pokemon. But I really do like adding some kind of animal like feature. No, that's the, kind the, of a challenge actually to to design to to add the animal part later. Exactly. I've never, I can't do that. That's hard. Because <laughs> like. I, it was just a coincidence that I realized, oh, bats, they drain energy and also they have to do with sound. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh, this is actually a cool opportunity. That's and awesome. 
it works with like the aesthetic like in terms of so like it kind of it looks like a vampire uh conductor basically um and yep. again that was before i even thought of bats <laughs> so it's like <laughs> No, bats were like you've got like these giant ears they use echolocation like these devotees would uh, you know have their ears listening to their favorite musician mm. and the yeah echolocation well. yeah i know that word yeah you go <laughs> yeah but it's 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 a really great animal and then also it's very ingrained with like rock culture anyway like ozzy True. osbourne and the, that bad unfortunately oh. uh, took that head right off so imagine this guy gets pissed off as one of his uh devotees but um it, it's a perfect fit it's a perfect fit uh, for the audience, uh, famous rock star bit the head off a bat on stage. <laughs> Rest well. in peace, bat. All this, all of this is fur. Like none of this yeah. is like clothes, obviously. Yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. want to <laughs> translate the natural parts of the animal to look artificial. Yeah, yeah. and that's the best design, you know. What yeah. is kind of cool though, now that you've said that, is you can see those like cosplay characters in the games or whatever. You could. They would dress up as this. There would oh, be. There would almost definitely be a trainer that is wearing this outfit. You know what I mean? Right. Oh yeah. Someone make a Gajinka version of this. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so funnily enough, we've gone almost a similar route with the idea of the uh, pre-evolution, you know, kind of looking up to or being fans of the evolved form. But it's not really oh. fans. There's no music involved. There's no none of that. And I challenged myself, not in the design, but in the, the lore of this. So every time I do this series... I've done it twice before. Everyone's come up with like knowledge about animals and I never know anything <laughs> about animals ever. So I challenged myself to learn something about animals and I'm hoping I didn't get it wrong, but <laughs> I've tried, all right? So I started with the concept of the streamer, the live streamer and the oh chat. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. So similar in concept, but, but different. Ron, if you want to replace this with whoever you want, you may do that, but here we oh, have Pokey. Oh, that's what they look like. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And their chat. Pokey's chat isn't yeah, that nice. There's a lot of non-fans, right? But the fans of the streamer are usually extremely devoted. Yeah, of you course. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So maybe I should have put myself in there, all right? I've got the I sense. was going to say, I was going to say, <laughs> why not advertise for your stream? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. So um, humble. So I also had the meme. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. God. Right. What does this have to do with animals? <laughs> well, here you go. I've never been more scared and excited to see <laughs> what's about to come. I, I'm telling you, my brain went down wild routes. Anyway, I worked my way there with lions. Ooh. Lions. To be honest, I forgot Litleo existed. Oh. But then I looked it up and I realized how much I like it. And I did some research. Apparently, Lion King the movie was wrong. <laughs> Apparently... <laughs> At least based on my readings of like three articles on the internet. So Simba may have been the king of the jungle or whatever in the movies, but in real life, Nala would have ruled the pride. <clears throat> so like females are like the dominant members of like the lion social structure. Again, apparently, this is my bad if I got this all wrong, but I did a lot of reading, three articles. Males will join like the, the prides to mate and whatever, but they don't, apparently they don't do much else. They're pretty lazy and that's kind of it. So I'm going boss, queen, just lead a girl who runs her own thing. You know what I mean? Girl boss, yeah. yeah. Girl boss. Yeah, uh, girl boss. And who's a better girl boss than Faramosa? True, you're not Period. wrong. She runs yeah. it. Period. And so then I was like, okay, well, also, I, how, how am I going to turn basically Faramosa into a lion? So I had a look at some of the examples <laughs> in right. the world. Stuff is <laughs> just some reference, you know, you just had to, you got to get some reference. Dude, I'm so. about to ban cats from you. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew I knew this would happen. I, I think I, I think you're happen. making the internet's favorite Pokemon. Like Virgo, See, this is Virgo's my problem. not allowed to do dragons anymore, and you're not allowed to do cats. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny that you said that because, like, okay, I did a cat, I did a wolf, but you've just sort of reminded me <laughs> that lions are cats. Lions are cats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that came up in the three articles. <laughs> no, it didn't. I didn't. <laughs> Oh, God damn it. All right. Okay. I have one Pokemon that has three forms, basically. What? The what the hell, Moxie? <laughs> they're very... You'll see. They're very simple. Look, I get into this stuff too much, all right? I really enjoy it. 
So we're starting with a little lion cub. As always with first evolutions, it's big heads and small bodies. But I wanted a bit more definition in the arms and legs of these Pokemon. Because I always thought the way the lion's legs were drawn in Lion King was kind of sick. I actually designed the final evolution first for this. So you're kind of seeing my brain work backwards here. But my plan from the beginning was to have the males of this species to have two different forms. One that's more quiet and introverted. And a more confident extroverted one who's a bit more in your face. The female one is supposed to be a bit more aloof. And she does her own thing separate to the boys. They also have two forms. But that's more of a thing with their evolution. You'll see. The introverts are a dark gray and the extrovert ones are a lighter brown with light yellow highlights. And this female one specifically also has purple eyes, which will also be more important later. There's a lot of lore here, trust me. Here they are. Oh, that's so cute. This is Vallejo. <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> that's so sick. I know it's kind of a simple, very simple design, but I wanted a, just an obvious lion Pokemon that I would love to have. And I think anyone would love to have on their team. Okay. Obviously, I think it, living in the desert kind of makes sense. So I went with the ground type and the sort of brownie kind of uh, color scheme. Honestly, the color scheme is young goose. <clears throat> oh, yeah, right. Oh, no, it is. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Apparently, the, and I learned this from Final Fantasy XIV, means to love. It just absolutely loves its evolved form. It looks up to them. It wants to protect them. It will do anything for them. It wants to be them. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm -hmm. So this is... This is basically what this Pokemon is. The two on the left, or well, the middle and the left one are the male ones. Um, the gray one, which is sort of like the more meager posture. It's, uh, it's got a bit of an attitude. It doesn't like to give too much eye contact. Mm. Um, and then the the middle one, which they, you know, they stand sort of more tall and confident. But Got they it. are very extremely protective of their male, uh, female, um, I'm not going to reveal the name yet. Oh. The, the evolved form. Cool. They try to imp impress them a lot by like attacking oh. whatever she attacks, etc. Like that. Got it. It's extremely uh, rare that the male uh, Verlea evolve, as only Verlea with three plus perfect IVs can evolve. So that's Ooh. that's their little thing. And then the female <laughs> ones are just uh, are extremely rare. I, I uh, landed on a 19 to 19 male to one uh, female ratio. Wow. And they don't really take too much notice of the male Verlea. They're looking up to the um the the alphas of the pack basically. Regular female Vallejo will have blue eyes. However, female Vallejo with purple eyes evolve into the special evolution. That's kind of the signifier to look out for in the wild. I really like the, so, yeah. the middle. I'm attracted to the middle one in terms of design. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know why I used the word attracted, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yo. But like the, the middle I'll one looks the... very good in terms of Pokemon style. They're so cute. Like, just seriously cute. Cool. I'd rather this guy than Sprigatito. Oh, really? Uh, I don't know. I, I, mean, I do like green, not gonna uh, lie. Oh, extra version, extra version. why did I not link the gray to the meme? I'm so stupid. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's, the, that's the meme. The, the, oh, nice. The gray in the Chad. I don't know what what other way to explain it. <laughs> oh, he even has like the Chad haircut, I guess, kind of. <clears throat> the triangle hair? Yeah. The triangle yeah. hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. All right, like I hopefully said before, today I just wanted to create a boss queen leader ruler lion ass Pokemon. <laughs> a Pokemon who looks like she can run her own thing, get stuff done. A Pokemon you do not want to mess with because you know she got people. <laughs> I wanted her to be looking down upon you like you're nothing with a massive flowing mane and a posture that just screams. Don't even try. I was tossing up between a few color schemes. Eventually, I landed on this tannish brown base with the Pikachu yellow highlights, like you saw with Vallejo. But I wanted to add an extra feeling of power and royalty. So she got some big fluffy spikes on the side of her legs. And in the end, she even got a crown. And of course, the boys evolve into this big hunky lion with Super Saiyan hair. And the girls also have a non-queen form too. Here they are. Whoa, this is oh, Alpha Vallejo. Oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> the, the internet's favorite <laughs> Pokemon was born. <laughs> I know. Oh no! I know. I had to do it. You had to so do it to him. I had to do it to him. I wanted it to stand up because all of our uh, other lion Pokemon are mm. on all fours, and I just have a preference in terms of like um, companion Pokemon. I like when they, you know, they stand up because they feel more like a companion. You like That's when they're sexy. Me. <laughs> no, I like when they stand no, and can be companions like myself. Uh, companions, you want this to be your companion. This is this is called projection. <laughs> <laughs> this is Moxie, what he looks like in the mirror. This is wow. <laughs> it's all coming out. I like the crown. I like the crown. Yeah, so I wanted to. Um, <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I really like the ponytail one. Yeah, so the, the idea the is side, that I like the mod. The, the chat mods. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so we've got, uh, like I said, different forms. And the main one is the queen one. 
So the leader of each pride has, has an, a female alpha layer who's this queen one who grows a little crown and has a big mane and stuff. <laughs> she is a ruthless, ruthless matriarch. She rules with an iron paw, but she's very caring and protective of her pack. Considering male Valeo and Alpha Leo will basically do anything for them, they barely have to lift a finger, so, and so will do most of the combat with their legs. Depending on their level of IVs, they'll either become a queen or, or just a regular one. So I made up the ability Lion Queen. Whenever you're in battle with a uh, queen Alpha Leo, at any time basically, she has a couple of uh, male Valeo ready to, to help her attack whenever she wants. So if she attacks, two of them will jump in and also do like a you know 10% extra damage and oh attack as well. Oh my god. And if she gets hit, one of them will dive in front and, and take a bit of damage as well. <laughs> Please tell me it happens once. Uh, I, so I thought maybe uh, there'd be two. Like, so th she's just got two of them. So if you attack, bang, bang, you, you get two, two extra attacks off. But oh, if they okay. take a hit, one's gone. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you get two like little damage protections or something like that. That's crazy. Unbalanced, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. And I had uh, I made the ability Queen's Kick, which is a steel type uh, kick move, which has a 20% chance to infatuate the uh, infatuate the target no matter the gender. Oh, so that's a bit of fun. Hell yeah! So the male Alpha Leo, known as Chad Leo to some, <laughs> are the uh, male Valeo who excelled beyond the rest of the males in the pack, at least physically. Uh, their bodies were trained to become steely strong, and they like to make that known to one another. So everything they do is to get the attention of a female Alpha Leo or to protect or serve their current one. Male Alpha Leo come and go from the pack. They never stick around long enough to, to form meaningful bonds. But while they are around though, they take very good care of all the Valeo cubs, looking after them all equally as they can't tell which one is theirs. Well, Which is apparently, a, that's apparently a thing in, in Lion uh, culture. Ooh, yeah. I've just stolen this all from, from Lion Land. You did <laughs> Lion your research, the three articles. What articles are these? <laughs> Can yeah. I get a link What's to this? I have them right here. If you would like to read them yourself, I have kept them for future reference. Are you sure they were the Dragon Feel Ball manga? Feel free to read them at any point. <laughs> we need fact checkers. We need some fact checkers. <laughs> this is a different kind of National Geographic, my boy. <laughs> I have a I have a tendency to just make Pokemon that I would like to see and that I think would be fun and cool, and I would love to have these Pokemon on my team. There are other <laughs> franchises for this. <laughs> just, go to, just, just play a different video game. <laughs> no, no, that's you know. What this video game? Just for, for my personal research. Well, which games do, would you recommend? This is all projection. These are just cool, strong Pokemon. <laughs> they are strong. And that is all. <laughs> No, I really do like the ponytail <laughs> one. I just noticed that all of our final evolutions are bipedal. Maybe June's oh. won't be. <laughs> Interesting. Oh boy, okay. Um, my concept started very similar to Moxie's, actually. Uh, debatable if we ended up there. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> the theme is, I was confused. Aren't we all? It's so <laughs> true, so true. I am very into uh, fish keeping. I have three oh. fish tanks. <gasps> I would love to have more. Uh, and recently, because I switched over to doing uh, all live aquariums, I've been really into uh, aquascaping and stuff. Oh. I've had an outbreak in all of my tanks of snails oh. that just oh, showed cool. up where they were not invited. And I'm just kind of obsessed with them. Like, they're just kind of interesting to look at for a yeah. long time. I'm obsessed with how quick they grow, how their shells come out of nowhere, and then suddenly there's this huge shell. I wanted to make something with shells. I'm going to do something oh with Ooh. what oh. the shell bell came from. Wow, that's so cool. Okay, cool. For the first form, I needed to figure out how to incorporate the shell bell item. I tried to play with styling it like a cape at first, but I'm really not very good at drawing inanimate objects at all, as it turns out, so I couldn't make that work. I designed the final form first, though, so I decided that the first form could somewhat match it a bit, and I gave him like a, a hat shell and like a little butt plate. Overall, though, otherwise, I kept him very simple. Just a cute little sea snail slash sea slug crossover with a shell that still somewhat resembles the item. That's so oh, let's cute! Go. I love the That's colors. so wow. cute! Yeah, the colors are so nice. So, his name is Sir Surf, so it kind of sounds like you're calling him Sir something because he's a little knight, but mm. also Surf, like he's in service, and also Surf because water. Isn't the Surf, uh... Yeah, isn't that a title for knights? Like a, no, isn't that like a peasant? Yeah! Nice. So it makes you sense for a pre evolution. You got it. Oh, that's, that's, that's a really good name then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, thank you. I felt pretty cool about it. Shell bells start off as bivalves, like little mussels living in the ocean. 
and should they be left to their own devices and not taken by man long enough that they will get big enough that they can venture out of their shells and they will be these little sur surfs. So cute. And I love how that those little fins kind of become opaque. It's crazy that it's related to an item, but obviously that item has animal parts, so it makes sense. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, like, shells were alive at some point before yeah. we, they end up in our houses. Were they? <laughs> <laughs> so the first form I took very easy. And the second form, I was thinking, okay, what can I do with shells? What can I do to have some sort of commander here? And what I ended up thinking that I could use like to have lowly little snails, little worms as, as her followers is I could go with like Aphrodite imagery. Oh, oh that's smart. smart. But this that awesome. famous painting of Aphrodite yeah. when she comes out of the sea foam and she's in like that, that's a bivalve of some kind. I don't know, scallop, mm -hmm. muscle, I don't know. That's a big she's scallop. in a shell. And I decided yep. to go with the idea that the ocean, the, especially the deep sea, is very similar to our understanding of outer space. Yeah. The final form I designed first because the process was so tumultuous. You know, I came in with all these different ideas. I was having such a hard time making them work together that I decided to instead just kind of lean into how weird it got, not doing anything specific, leaving it kind of alien. The main inspiration for her appearance was a live giant clam, which those already look pretty bizarre. And then her body turned out to be this sort of like, almost like a, a snail centaur, but like the, the snail slug has limbs. So like lizard, not snake, you get me, you feel me. So here she is. Just kidding, that's <laughs> when she's closed. Whoa, that, whoa. Here she is open. Oh, that's cool. What? That is, uh, this is so incredible. sick. Oh Thank my you. god. Thank you. I mean, this color scheme is really good too. Like, I think yeah. they're very delicious. I and like. I, <laughs> I love when one Pokemon evolves into a completely different animal, but it still like works. Damn. The name is so cute too. Oh, I feel yeah, bad. Wow. I've come. I've cute. come in here with Luna twice, but. Hey, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> Everybody has something. Everybody has something yeah. that I have to ban. <laughs> I'll be wary of beetles next time. It's so nice. I love the shapes there. Like the extended form is just registers so alien. And, you know, I like that cosmic connection that you were kind of like delving into. I have a rejected shiny uh, approach. I, I almost made it green to be like little green oh. men. Oh. Like aliens. I actually like that. I don't know what it is with me. And I'm like obsessed with making green shinies work. Oh, because green's in your name. <laughs> <laughs> Moxie. I don't think very much. <laughs> <laughs> Felt. I actually, I really like how intimidating it is for a second. Even mm. the little, the little mouth, it kind of looks like it's gonna chomp you up or mm. something. Mm. And then boom, it opens up and is really pretty space mollusk, whatever the word is. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always a fan of the motif of like alien sea creatures. They really, mm -hmm. they really always, it works all the time. And I mean, there's a common motif between this and like your previous design too, in terms of like frills and the patterns are pretty similar too. Ooh, it is cool yeah. how people like have their kind of themes and stuff though. Like it is, <laughs> that's definitely especially true. Especially the things that they really like, because <laughs> mm -hmm. you just make something amazing out of it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think anyone can, would complain if this is a real Pokemon. They'd be like, oh my God, this person actually cared about the thing that they designed. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think that's what you were saying with your design. You created a Pokemon that you yourself wanted to see and you know, yeah. I think that's just so cool. Like, I, That's one of my honest, favorite things about this series, yeah. Mm -hmm, the audience will come to know us, you know, through our, our creations, you know? I don't mm -hmm. think we would commit to anything else that we didn't really believe in or love. And I like when you look at it, like you see the its clamness is behind its head. Which wait, I, yeah, in, wait, June, you know, what if the head is behind its mouth? Like super alien weirdo. Yeah. Like, oh, that's <laughs> cool. Okay. How does it move, by the way? Uh, it doesn't. <laughs> it does not move. Not very much. <laughs> Uh, the legs are more for grabbing things. She's very <laughs> squishy, flexible. Just a little extra grabbers. More, more to hold. More grabbers. You, know? you gotta have the grabbies. You gotta have the grabbies. Guys, there are other uh, there are other video games for that kind of thing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and with that, we all gotta download some games. <laughs> Let's head out. Thank you guys for bringing me some of the most unique designs that we've had on the series. Thank you for having us. Thank and everybody you. subscribe. Thank you so much for yes. Us. Yes, please. Subscribe True Gree 7 now. And yeah, of course, in the description is all of these lovely people's uh, socials and channels and stuff like that. Go check out the previous episodes if you haven't. We we got yes. a lot of more two-legged cat ladies. 
Oh, right? yeah. Not the first. If you want more cat ladies, <laughs> go check out the previous episode. episode of cat stuff. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want part six, let me know. Bye. 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 I haven't, I haven't laughed this long in, in a while. This hard in a while. <laughs>